mic check. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Go before us, O Lord, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. With him, 165. Today, sixth Sunday of Easter, it is also the Women's Auxiliaries Corporate Communion. We remember them prayerfully. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed Lord and the Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and the thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and the bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, 
To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you are prepared for those who love you, such things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Word of God. Reading Acts chapter 16, beginning at the ninth verse. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia 
pleading, pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Taurus and took a straight course to Somatrace the following day to, to Nepalis and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Tyra and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. And when she saw her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Psalm is Psalm 67, found on page 549. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples Praise you. May God give us his blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. A reading from the Revelation to John, chapter 21, beginning at verse 10. In the spirit, the angel carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord. God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city had no need for sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gate will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there, People will bring into it the glory 
and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will enter Nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore. But the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. The gradual hymn is 840.
there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew Bethsaida, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take up your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. This is the Gospel of Christ. I am here today declaring that God still wills our healing and our salvation. Do you believe that? Yes. I am here as a living testimony of God's power to transform, God's power to heal. And I also believe that more people are being healed by God today than ever before. Using modern science, modern medicine, and divine healing. God is the ultimate source of power and the ultimate source of healing. And so, I would like for us today to listen to the Lord, to acknowledge his presence in our midst, and just to reach out to him as he reaches out to you. I draw your attention to the gospel reading from St. John chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. At the time of Jesus, there were three Jewish feasts of obligation. To them, every adult male Jew who lived within 20 miles of Jerusalem, was bound to attend. They were the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of the Passover, and the Feast of the Tabernacles. It was probably the Feast of Pentecost that Jesus had come to Jerusalem for at the time. There's no word about his disciples. So probably he went alone. As he walked through the city, he came across a certain pool. Just where the pool was is uncertain. It may have been near the sheep gate or the sheep market. The authorized version calls it the pool of Bethsaida, which might mean the house of mercy. Now, as stories would have it, there were healing properties in the pool. 
For every now and again, the pool bubbled up. There must have been some subterranean spring beneath it, which sent out a gush of water every now and then. People, however, believed that the bubbling was caused by an angel, and that per the person who succeeded in being the first into the pool after the water was stirred would be cured of any disease which he or she happened to have been suffering. The belief in bodies of water being possessed by evil spirit was not just widespread in Palestine, but all over the world. And we know even today there are still elements of such beliefs around. We will talk about certain places like Flatbridge and some other places where we believe spirits lurk. There's, there was also at the time the thinking that from time to time some goddesses or spirits uh, would sweep away people in bodies of water and because that belief was so strong if somebody saw someone being swept away by the water they sometimes would not intervene because they felt that it was the work of the gods. And so should they intervene, maybe the gods would get angry and harm them as well. Very, very interesting. So it's not hard to understand then why the people of Jerusalem would believe that an angel caused the bubbling of the water that took place from time to time to happen. It's interesting to note, though, that Jesus did not tell the man at the pool that the belief about the moving of the water was only a superstition. Jesus was eager to help, not to put down, not just to win an argument. He was eager to make a positive difference in the man's life. And again, here Jesus becomes our teacher and our great example. We have persons around who just love to win an argument, who just love to tell you why you are so wrong and they are so right. Jesus did not occupy himself with such frivolities. Jesus wanted to go to the heart of the matter. He wanted to make a difference. We have clergy in our diocese too, who will tell you, oh, you made the wrong bow and the wrong sign and the wrong whatever. I don't see where that is going to help us with our salvation <laughs> at all. Jesus is about touching lives, making a difference. And so at the pool would have been many spectators just waiting for this wonderful moment when the water was stirred just to see what miracles would have taken place. And clearly in their conversation with Jesus, they would have pointed out to him some of the most pathetic cases. Clearly, this man's situation was pointed out to Jesus. He was there for 38 years trying to get into the pool. Can you imagine that? 38 years trying to find healing. Now there are three things worthy of noting about him. Things that we can learn from quickly. The first is that his illness was chronic. For 38 long years, he had been well nigh helpless. Here is the great thing, though, that it doesn't matter how deep-seated our trouble may be. 
or how incurable it may appear, Jesus can cure it. That's what this story is saying to us. Jesus can cure it. It perhaps may be a habit that we would have developed over time that has gotten such grip on us that it seems impossible to break. Is that your case? Is it a case of a bad habit that you want to break, but it has gotten such hold on you that it seems impossible? Could it be some kind of indulgence, gambling, alcohol, whatever it might be? And you just don't know how to stop. I have people in my own family like that. Is it some deep-seated fear that has been haunting you all these years? It has become so complex that you feel helpless. Jesus can help you to conquer it, whatever it is. You know, in my own time, trusting Jesus, I have proven the power of the Lord to make a difference in people's lives, and I cannot help but trust him. I just have to trust him. When times are good, when the chips are down, I just have to trust him. Because every time that I cease trusting him, he works it out for me and put me to shame. And said, Leroy, what have you been worrying about? Didn't you know I would come through for you? This is the God we serve. And if today you don't believe in this Jesus Christ, why are you here? You know what I mean? We are not just mechanically here in love with the institution. We are here because we believe we come to greet the Lord who can touch us in a positive way and make a difference in our lives. It is sad that not very many of us as Anglicans seem to have any confidence in God's ability to act in our own church. You know that? I have had members <laughs> who never came to me and said, Father, lay your hands on this sick of person within my household. But they would take the journey from country to town because some televangelist is coming to lay hands on them, pay this enormous sum. I remember the case of one little boy. The result was that the boy died, unfortunately. But I'm saying, they never came to me as their priest and said, Father, would like you to pray for this person. I remember when I was a student and we went to a particular cure and we were having a week of mission, and we were having a healing night as well. And some of the comments were, oh, then them have any power to heal. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, that, <laughs> I don't know. So, um, but I have proven in my own time that God has used me and God has used others from within our church to lay hands on persons and they were healed. You know what I mean? One of the persons came here recently to a service. From that day on, they never complained about that situation. And I've seen persons healed over and over again and it's attributed to the power of God only. We must believe, brothers and sisters, we must believe that God can make a difference. Sometimes what God does is that he changes the situation. Sometimes he changes us. He gives us a different perspective so that even though the situation is there, it's like it's not because you now have learned how to handle it. 
Sometimes healing means the transitioning from this life to the next for some people. That's what it's going to mean. Even death is healing because death is a gateway to greater life for some people. And so we have to understand that God wills our health and our salvation. And his power is no less potent today than it was in the time of Jesus. So the first point is that the man's case was chronic, but it was not beyond the Lord. Secondly, the man had no friends, it seems. Clearly, in the earlier days, there were persons there to take him to the pool daily with the hope that something would happen. But after a while, their hope in him being healed would have waned. And so they would have lost interest in him and in the situation and would have left him there. How many persons when they just become ill, we have this high hope for them. You know what I mean? We pray for them. We'll take them to the doctors and we would, we would pray. But after a while, it's like we abandon them. We forget that they are there. They are left to hope on their own. You know, we have to become the community of healing. Yes, the community of love, the community that, that cares. And I'm not saying St. Gabriel's isn't, because I don't know about it. But I'm saying the church has to become that community. I have oftentimes visited sick, and they complain that when they were active, everybody knew them. But once they became ill, not even groups, organizations that they were a part of visited them. And that is sad. We still have to remember these folks. And when they can't come, the church must go to them and show that love and care that is needed. But what is true here in the story is that though the man had no friend, our friends, Jesus became his friend. When we have no friends left in the world, Jesus wants to be our friend. The psalmist says, when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. The songwriter wrote, I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. Is that who Jesus is to you? Do you know that he's always there? You are never alone. I must have the Savior with me, for I dare not. Jesus is always with us, brothers and sisters. And that is comforting. That is comforting. So when no one else cares about us, just remember, our Lord cares, and he will be a friend to us. And thirdly, this man had never totally lost hope at all. And that's the key to healing. After 38 years of waiting, he was still there by the pool. He was still there hoping to get into the water. From all probability, he should have abandoned hope long ago. But somehow, hope would not die in him. Miraculous, wonderfully, yes. Once we give up hope, brothers and sisters, certainly nothing else will happen. Nothing will happen. But so long as we remain hopeful, then we would have created the window for a miracle to happen in our lives. What is your situation? What is your story? What's the level of hope that you have today? What are you entertaining hope for this day? 
though the odds seem to be against you? Is it for some members of your family? You know, I gave to some members here some Operation Andrew cards, and um, it speaks of listing some names of persons for whom you want to pray. You want to encounter the Lord, and we'll be distributing to the entire congregation in turn. And I have listed on mine some members of my family, among others. And though the odds seem to be against us, I am not giving up hope. Because here's my father in the congregation this morning. And if today my father can be a confirmed Anglican, anybody else can change. Pops, I'm so proud of you. It reached a point where when he decided to be confirmed, I asked for the date and I abandoned my own church in Portmore and went to witness his confirmation because I know where he was coming from and where the Lord had brought him. And so, brothers and sisters, don't give up hope for those you love, for those you care about, those you want Jesus to touch. Don't give up hope, whether it's within your family, your community, your church, your country, whatever it is, do not give up hope at all. If then we are people of hope, then Jesus wants to ask us the piercing question that he asked the man by the pool. And the question is, do you want to be well again? That was the question Jesus asked the man. And that's the question to you today. Of course, we all stand today in need of God's help, in need of God's healing in one way or another whether it be physical, emotional, psychological, spiritual, whatever it is, we all stand in need of God's help. But what is your chronic situation today that you'd want the Lord to touch? What is it? Do you want to be well? Again is the question. This question is very relevant as psychologists will tell us, that many people are ill for no other reason than they want to be ill. It's very interesting, very interesting. Leslie Weatherhead quotes one such case. He says, there was a girl named Kathleen G. She was about 20, young and healthy, and a typist in a village garage. She became engaged to the curate of the village and was radiantly happy because now she felt that she was going to be somebody of worth, of great standing in the community, and she didn't have to continue doing menial tasks and so on. But down the road, the curate broke off with her. And from that day, she plunged into depression. Her life took a turn for the worse. She would not eat. She would not talk. After a while, the parents took her to the doctor who said they should try and get her to eat. Took her to the specialist who said they should try and get her to eat. And finally, to Weatherhead. And it was after a long period of, you know, therapeutic intervention that Weatherhead discovered that she was ill simply because she wanted to be so. In fact, her desire was to die, to starve herself to death so as to take revenge on the curate. And so, should she die, you know, the curate would feel badly and responsible for 
her death. <laughs> very, very interesting here. And so, some people are ill because they want to. When people want to be the center of attention, sometimes they form ill. And some of us know too that when we don't want to go to work today, we go to the doctor and ask to write up sick leave and all of that. And we play ill and all of that. But you know, we can be healed if we really want to. So Jesus' question is not superfluous at all. It is important. What do you want today is my question to you. And the next thing is that for help to become affected in us, we must be willing to do what Jesus asked us to do. So the man explained to Jesus, he was very honest, that yes, 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 yes. His explanation was in essence saying, yes, I want to, but I have no help. For 38 years, every time I try to move, somebody else is ahead of me. But Jesus said to the man, get up, take up your mat and walk. Get up. Take up your mat and walk. The man could have said, what silliness is this? I am here 38 years, can't move, and you're telling me to get up and walk. But instead of harboring doubt, the man entertained faith. The man responded in faith. The man obeyed Jesus. And James will tell us that, you know, Faith without work is dead. And so we have to trust and obey. How often Jesus wants to help us, but we lack the will to do what he asks us to do. We lack the faith. We have grown so discouraged that we cannot muster up the courage, the faith to walk, to move. And so we make all kinds of excuses. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you, when we make the effort, and our effort is backed by Jesus, the impossible becomes possible. And so, as people of faith, we need to know that nothing is impossible for God to do today. What is it that you want? Do you want to experience today the transforming grace of Christ in your life? Your yes to him, to his question to you today, could mark the turning point for you, for your situation, for your family, for the person you're praying for. And so I urge you today to reach out to Jesus as he reaches out to you. Pray that somehow in this worship experience, he will touch your life. Sometimes the touch begins with your mind. Even Bob Marley said, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. So sometimes it's our mind, is our perspective that needs to be changed first and foremost. So ask the Lord to begin his touch, his healing touch in your life today as you reach out to him. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath the load of guilt and shame then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I am no longer the same. Pray for that touch. He touched me. Testify if he has ever. Oh, he touched me. 
And all that joy that filled my soul, something happened. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. And some of us have been touched and touched and touched. We have the testimony since I met the blessed. Said Savior, since he cleansed and made me, I have never, I have never ceased to pray. I'll shout it, I'll shout it, I'll shout it while it is. The man that touched today, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. It can happen right here and now. And oh, that joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now. I know he touched me and made me whole. He is here. touch him, your world never be. Touch him, he is here. He's the same Jesus, the same God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And he can touch you. He can make a difference in your life. If we don't believe this, pack up and go home. But if we believe he's here, and his Holy Spirit can touch you. Then reach out. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. Holy, holy. I will bless his name again. He is his hair. Listen closely. Hear him calling out your name. He is here. You can touch him. So I leave you with a question again. What do you want from Jesus? Do you want to be made well again? It's possible. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For intercession will be guided by Form C. We pray today that God's Holy Spirit may be recognized in our midst. We pray that we'll surrender our all to him today. We will develop listening ears and hearts. That we'll have ready will to do what God expects of us today. We pray for the health of our church, of our community, of our nation, and of the world. Remember healing conference coming up. We pray for all those who are making plans. We are, pray for all those who will be involved. And we pray that God may continue to touch and to transform. Pray for our local situation today. For those of us who would have heard the voice of Jesus today, will respond to his call. We'll open our hearts and let him in. Pray that through his word and in the sacrament today, we may encounter Christ in his risen power. We pray for the women's auxiliary of this church. Pray for their work and worth. Pray that God may continue to activate them into usefulness in his kingdom as they live out their aims and objectives. We pray for all organizations within the fellowship of Christ's body. We pray for those who have requested our prayers for one reason or another. We pray for the transforming work of Christ right now and in this place. Reach out and touch the Lord, Lord as he passes by. You will find is not to be to hear your heart's cry. He is passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. Form C. Let us pray. With all our heart and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace and welfare of the world, for the witness and work of the church, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and all ministers of God's word and sacraments, that they may be filled with the truth and love and be found without fault at the Lord's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of the nations and for those in authority among us, that they may serve justice and promote the freedom and dignity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, 
and for all who labor in the cause of human liberation and fulfillment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from the ravages of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and proper use of God's creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Women's Auxiliary Prayer. Do you have that? No, Father. Okay, continue. O Lord, our God, accept, accept the, the fervent, fervent prayers of, of your people in, in our multitude, multitude of, of your mercies. Look, Look with, with compassion, compassion on us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O Lord of love, and, and to you we give, give glory, Father, Son, Father, and Holy Spirit, Spirit now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, for the glory of your name. Mighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and a joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. And approved by others. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Offertory hymn is 332.
Father, we offer to you these gifts which you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money. With them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become, through your Holy Spirit, a reasonable, holy, and a lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us eternal life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And the greater prayer be, holy and the gracious Father, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and to die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and the Father of all. We therefore bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for all mankind. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Jesus Christ.
Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension, his continual intercession for us in heaven, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life-giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may be filled with your Holy Spirit and become one body in Christ and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. May he make us a perpetual offering to you and enable us in communion with Blessed Mary and the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your saints. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so in him we pray. Art in heaven, holy, 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 holy be thy name. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth, thy will be done on earth. Thy kingdom come on earth, as it is in We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
the gifts of God for the people of God.
We thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we will share his body, live his wisdom life. We will drink his cup, bring life to others. We upon whom your spirit shines, give light to the world. Help us to continue in faithful witness to your word. So we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest, remain, abide with you all today, this Easter tide, and always. Please be seated for the welcome and announcements. Good morning, brothers and sisters. It is good to be here this morning and to have hope. Amen? Amen. Okay. I want to welcome all of our members and visitors who are worshiping with us today, whether in person or through the virtual web. And I want to thank our rector for the sermon preached this morning. I'm sure we were all touched. And we will be getting lots of calls about this sermon. Thank you, thank you, rector. We extend our special welcome to you if you are visiting with us for the very first time. Now, last week we had Mr. Tucker. Mr. Tucker is back this week. He said he would be. But Mr. Tucker did not come alone. He told us initially that he would be taking his sons. Well, Zachary is here. Zachary, stand. Let us see you, Zachary. Welcome, Zachary. And Raheem is also here. Stand up for us, Raheem. Okay, welcome. Man of his word, Mr. Tucker is. Okay, we also have worshiping with us Trudine Brett. Trudine, where are you? Trudian. Okay, Trudian. Welcome. Welcome, Trudian. And we have. Oh, your niece. Okay, it's, it's Rector's niece. Right, welcome. Also, we have Bluet Small Messiahs. Yes, and she's a guest for uh, Mrs. Atkinson's guest, right? That's right, and she's a repeat visitor. So we just want to welcome our visitors. Anybody worshiping with us for the first time that we did not get their name? No, second time? Yes, Marlon, I see you. <laughs> okay, third time visitor? All right, great. So this is wonderful that we have these persons worshiping with us today. Okay, now, it's all right, it's all right. Our birthday persons today are Jaquiel Jones on the 24th of this month. Glossim is on the 25th. Glossim Jones on the 25th. Crystal Chang, Elaine Roberts, and Wesley Moss, and Tyra Lee Cummins from the Sunday School, all on the 26th. So Mr. Simpson will come and direct us Today's your birthday. <laughs> what is our name? What is our name? You forgot to tell me last week. 
Miss Stevens. Miss All right. Stevens. I'll make a note of it, Miss Stevens, for next time, next year this time. All right. Happy birthday, Miss Stevens. Wonderful. Yes, Mr. Simpson. Having their birthdays, and uh, we take our direction from it. Thank you very much, all. I'm asking that we remember our sick and shut in members. And um, we got word from Mr. Lawrence that uh, Gloria is doing, is making reasonable progress, and she's looking forward to returning home in the month of June. And I've been asked to convey thanks for the prayers and love that you have sent out to them. So please continue to pray for Mrs. Lawrence and for all the other persons who are sick and shut in. We have their names on the door. Okay. On the, oh first, next Sunday, next Sunday is Children's Sunday. And for next Sunday, remember that church begins at 8 a.m. Not 7.30, but 8 a.m. Please make a note of it. All right? And we are hoping to, re to have a really good experience next Sunday for Children's um, Sunday. Also, on the 12th of June, 3.30 in the afternoon, we will be having this, a, a mass service for the introduction of our rector to the community of Maypen. All right. Someone said to me, but he was introduced already to us. Yes, to us. But we are now introducing him to the Costas, the mayor, the police superintendent, the fire brigade chief, all those persons, the pastors in the area, from the other churches so that he can be associated and know the other members in the community, our teachers, our principals in the, in the schools in the area, and some other persons, business people, and so on. So that is why we are having that service. It's not just for us, you know. It's for other people too. And so we want the other persons to know him. So that Sunday, the service is at 3.30 in the afternoon, so we will not be having any service in the morning. So please note, we will not be having services in the morning. We will be having service in the afternoon, and the um, Hayes, St. James's Hayes members will be here, and also St. Paul's members will be here from MOCO. All right, so please make a note of that. Harvest. So harvest time is back again. And on the 26th of June, we will be having our harvest festival. And that is when we take the best of what we have grown, and some of us we buy, and we decorate the church, and we take our gifts to God that Sunday. So we are asking you to take off your best gift to God on that Sunday. Then we normally have a sale after that in the church hall of what you brought. So please remember to look in your garden from now, look at that special banana and say that is for the 26th of June. That planting over there, 
26th of June, but of course we know we take it on the 25th of June for us to decorate the church. On the 28th of June, that's when we will have our harvest luncheon. And as we say, luncheon, meaning we are going to be serving our luncheon from 11 to 4. And our protein being provided is fish, pork, and chicken. You notice that the expensive guy is not there this year, but uh, we are hoping for the best. Tickets are out. The tickets are $1,200. And we are issuing them from the heads of organizations. And if you are not in an organization, Mrs. De Silva will be the person you get your tickets from. No, the person, yes, yes, I some people. The persons who have contributed to the, to the sponsoring of the tickets are Value Mart, Shop 28 Bargain Village, Fesco, Bodles, Matic Fesco in Montego Bay, and Hanover, right, St. James and Hanover, Mikey's Meats and More, and that's right down at the plaza. What's the plaza again, Mr. Simpson? Midland Mid Plaza, thank you. Midland Courts, thank you, Mr. Morant. Sharon's Flowers and More, and that's down at the um, I'm not seeing Murad Shopping Center complex, right? Far more pharmacy that's on Main Street, Maple Ice, that's on Manchester Avenue. Stanic Farms, that's in New Longville Park. Sorry, New Longville. Ragwanti Trucking, that's on Anderson Drive. Stewart's Hardware, that's on Manchester Avenue, Hold Harbor, Mandeville. Fine Prints, and that's on Fernley Avenue. Uh, um, I can't believe this. I'm not seeing people. Something is wrong with my eyes. Right. Okay. And House of Wales and My Ken Cafe Bonjour Marquis Enterprise. I'm finished? No, Newly Texaco, that's in Mandeville. National Self Serve Wholesale, that's on Brooks Avenue. A and P Russell, that's in Summerfield. Maypen Health Center, that's on Manchester Avenue. Dominion Tiles, that's on Manchester Avenue. Uh, Jones Roti and Wraps, that's Omni Plaza, Manchester Avenue. And uh, Shadrock Enterprise from Brian's Crescent. Uh, Coors Fesco and FYC Express, that's on the highway. Mid Island Electric, that's on Gordon Street, Maypen. All right, I'm good now, right? Okay, thanks, thanks so much to the, those persons who have sponsored the tickets. Okay, doke. Now, remember persons, people, friends, family, that we ask that you make your contributions towards the chicken, the fish, the pork drive to your organization president, right? Or the church office. So we need your usual support in, the, in those drives. Now, your contribution will be greatly appreciated, and so we just ask that you make the best gift that you can. We also would need your assistance on the day before. Well, first of all, we need your assistance on, this, on the Saturday to decorate the church, and on the Monday, we want to do our prep work and so we are just asking you if you could let your the leader of your group know so that they can convey to us uh, those persons who are able to contribute by way of uh, actually coming to assist or in some instances uh, some persons pay someone to assist us the day before and on the actual day of the harvest right so please let us do our best. So are we going to sing the harvest song? Yes? Okay, let's go. 
Harvest luncheon, harvest luncheon, time is here, time is here. Come and get your tickets, come and get your tickets, harvest time. Thank you, I think we sound better this week than last week. Yes, Father, do you wish to say anything? Sisters, brothers in Christ, and always good to see you and to be in fellowship with you. Trudy, thank you for coming. Thank you. All right. Um, two things, or three things. First of all, I am making the appeal again for persons to volunteer to become acolytes. I am eager to begin the training. And so if you are desirous of becoming an acolyte, we ask that you give your names to any of the church wardens. Also, those who are desirous of being confirmed, we ask that you do the same. So we can begin classes. And thirdly, I would like to ask your prayers for the Bishop-elect of Kingston, Canon Garth Minot. We know he was elected at our most recent synod, and we have gotten notice from the bishop that the consecration will be on Saturday, June 11, at the Feast of St. Barnabas at the Kingston Parish Church downtown. And I believe also that the invitation is extended to congregants who can make it. It will be at 10 a.m. You will hear more of this in the notice. But I ask your prayers for him at this time. And the doc, should I put in a plug for a healing conference coming up next Sunday as well? And if you cannot make it in person, then of course, the link has been issued. I think it has been given out. All right. But we ask that you be prayerful about healing conference as God remains in the healing business. He does. Thank you. Thank you, Father. And just a word that, and I should have said it before, Father, the name tags, please wear your name tags. Remember that mo we, are, we are under mask, so Father cannot remember what we look like under the mask. He didn't know us before. So with the name tags, it's a way of helping him to remember people's names, because I'm sure we would not want to know that he's speaking to us and he doesn't recognize the name or know the name or remember the name. So please, it's a gentle reminder to him of who you are. All right? So please, that is basically the reason why we have the name tags, to help, to help him to remember us. We are asking you to leave the tags here because you might go home and you might take it off and do not remember to take it back next week. And so it's defeating the purpose of the name tags. All right? So please, I would appreciate if you would all um, do that. The, the stick on tag will not, will not um, you be you able to go back on a second time. So don't worry if you have a stick on tag. Um, next week, I will try and sort that out um, in its full. Right? So that everyone will have um, the tags that we can collect again. Okay? And so I pray that the Lord will help us to do his will, to walk in his ways, to the honor and glory of his name. But before we go, Mr. Simpson needs to say a word. Brotherhood members, would you would like to meet with the Brotherhood members after church? 
All right, thank you. Brotherhood members, please. Have a good day. The recessional hymn is 183. The Lord be with you. Let us pray.
let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord.